For more than 1,000 years, Alaska's Cook Inlet region has been home to the Denina Athabascan people. In the fall of 2013, the museum hosted the first ever major exhibition that paid tribute to Denina culture, art, and traditions, many of which are still practiced in the region today. The Anchorage Museum's special exhibit curator and series shareholder, Aaron Leggett, helped coordinate the seven-year effort to bring artifacts from around the world to be on display in Anchorage. The first scene that you see when you walk into Denainak, who truly is she, the Denaina way of living, is a recreation of a contemporary Denaina fish camp. This is based on the Ivanov family fish camp in Nondalton, and the uh, curators worked very closely with the Ivanov family to create as authentic as possible a recreation of their family fish camp. Every Denina community still puts up fish today, so we wanted a scene that not only linked the past, but also was very well rooted in today's traditions. This part of the exhibition, we've organized it around the Denina lifestyle. So we take you from infancy and young childhood up through puberty, marriage, and death. The exhibit featured the tools the Denina used in their everyday lives. Ornately crafted drinking straws, and jewelry, boots and mittens, carving tools made from bone, antler, and metal that Denina would acquire through trade, and garments made from materials provided by the land and its resources. In the case, you'll see caribou skin clothing. This would have been the type of clothing worn during the summertime by the Denina up until the late 19th century. The Denina often decorated the clothing with intricately woven beads, porcupine quills, and berry seeds, featuring geometric designs unique to each individual garment. The exhibit featured information about the Denina social structure and clan lineage with artifacts that demonstrated social status. In the case over here, we have objects that belong to a variety of Denina Keshkas or leaders, including objects that belong to my great-great-grandfather, Aklutna Alex, from my village of Aklutna. Within Denina society, like all Athabascan societies, the Denina highly prized what are called dentalium shells. Then time shells are a small white mollusk shell that were traded up the northwest coast from down around Vancouver Island in British Columbia. As is often the case today, the early Denina subsistence lifestyle followed the seasons. Bear gut parkas featured in the exhibit show traces of the seasonal influences. Look closely, you'll note that there's different color patches, and the reason for that is that they were different bears taken at different times of the year. The stripe with the blue hue comes from a black bear taken during blueberry season. The Denina people devised innovative hunting tactics to harvest resources such as beluga whales. The exhibit showed how they would uproot a spruce tree, anchor it in the inlet at low tide, and wait for the beluga's arrival. When the tide came back in, the beluga whales would swim following the hooligan and salmon. And when the beluga got close enough, he would spear the animal and spear it with this the only known example of a Denina harpoon. This comes from the Ethnological Museum in Berlin and is over eight feet long and was collected at the tail end of when the Denina would have used this style of hunting in the 1880s or early 1890s. The exhibit featured other unique hunting tools, including a painted caribou hide quiver discovered at a high school in Haimalina, Finland, during the research for the exhibit. On the quiver is a hunting scene painted in red ochre depicting various animals that the Denina would have hunted and some of the means of transportation like uh, using snowshoes as well as skin boats and kayaks. 
Throughout the exhibit, the Anchorage Museum sought to not only display the impressive historical artifacts, but also show how the traditions passed down through the generations are still practiced today. One example of that is the fish trap behind me made by Helen Dick and her family in Lyme Village. The Anchorage Museum had this fish trap commissioned and we documented every step needed to create this beautiful object. More than half of Alaska's entire population now live in the traditional homeland of the Denina people. The intensity of change to the land and lifestyle is more dramatic here than anywhere else in Alaska. The final scene of the museum exhibit depicts that change. With a hint, the Denina culture not only survived, but is now gaining strength. We end the timeline here with a fact like the naming of the Denina Convention Center or Cook on the Tribal Council's uh, Natuk, the first building in Anchorage to have a Denina name. And all these things come together to show that despite all the offices or shopping malls or movie theaters that are put here, this is still Denina Althnena or the traditional Denina homeland. And so this is the home of my people, the Denina of South Central Alaska. <laughs>